The candle is melting. The magic will be gone. All their gifts will be lost. These thoughts are on repeat in Mirabelle's head, not being able to think of anything else as she looks down at the magic candle. After getting the candle out of the house, the girl went to a small wooden box to hide from the heavy rain. Casita has already broken down, only leaving rubble of what once was their magical house. Abuela and the others went straight to the townspeople to find shelter, leaving the fifteen-year-old girl behind with the melting candle. As she looks at the barely burning flame, tears streaming down her face, Mirabelle can't help but think that this is all her fault. It's her fault that Casita cracked and broke down. She should have just done what her abuela has told her and not attended Antonio's ceremony. It was because of her that the magic was dying, because of her lack of a gift. That's what abuela told her anyway. The rest of the family probably all blame her as well. They all probably think she was cursed, or that she did it on purpose, or that she purposely caused it. They probably all hate her now. But Mirabelle knows how she can still fix it. She looks down at the barely burning flame of the candle, her breath shaking as she thinks it through. Abuelo Pedro sacrificed himself in order for Casita to be built with magic. But now, she has to. She's the only Madrigal who has lived her entire life without a gift, so it only makes sense for her to make the sacrifice. Besides, her family probably won't even mind her gone. They only ever saw her as the one without a gift, or as an annoyance to be dealt with. They excluded her in everything anyways, so it won't change anything for them. It will probably even be better for them. Mirabelle takes one last look at the candle, reminding herself of what she is about to do. While on her journey to restore the magic, she slowly came to terms that she might have to die for that to happen. And now, that time has come. She has decided to go out in peace, surrounded by Casita's magic for the last time in her final moments. It sounds like an ideal way to go, and it is. And the best part? Her family will finally know her worth at long last. Mirabelle raises the candle to her chest, fully ready to accept her fate. Slowly. She can feel the magic in her and around her, feel its warm glow and touch. It feels great. It feels so good to finally feel the magic for herself, to finally know what it's like to get a taste of what her family always has. The girl finally knows what it's like to have magic, to have a gift, something she has longed for her entire life since that day she was left alone and disappointed in front of a blank wall. Mirabelle smiles at the realization. She never wants this moment to end, but it has to. Her family will be happy with magic again, and Casita will be rebuilt. That's why it's such a perfect way to go. The fifteen-year-old closes her eyes as the magic does its work. The golden floor isn't even finished when someone calls out no. The girl is too tired to turn her head, but she recognizes the voice instantly. It sounds afraid, stressed, worried, desperate to make her stop what she's doing. It's... it's Tio Bruno. Suddenly, Mirabelle feels the candle and the magic ripping away from her, catching her off guard. She already misses the magic and its warmth, when two arms pull her into a tight hug. She knows who it is. She knows it's Tio Bruno, the one family member who truly understands her and her struggles. But she still can't help but feel angry, 
Why did he ruin her attempts to save the magic, to fix everything? He said it himself, that the fate of the family and the magic came down to her. But he just ruined the only chance that she still had. She tried to save the family's fate, but he messed it up. Yet, she hears, she feels, his silent cries, and her anger slowly melts away. Her mind, though, goes crazy with worry. She tries blindly reaching for the candle, wanting to attempt her sacrifice again for her family, but to no avail. She reaches, begs for the candle. It does not matter, Bruno manages to say, through his sobs and his tears, like a dad who just found his missing child. He's more concerned that she is okay. Those words hit Mirabelle differently. Her Tio just brushed the melted candle off as if it's nothing. Why? Why did he stop Casita, his childhood home, from being rebuilt again just for her? Why? Mirabel manages to ask, her voice choked up. Bruno answers, hugging his niece a bit tighter, that he could have lost her. Yep, she's right, and it makes her tear up. Finally, someone who cares more about her than the magic who loves her regardless of her gift and won't ever judge or isolate or exclude her, not even accidentally. Her throat becomes tighter, and a flood of tears come down her cheeks upon that realization. Mirabel may be soaking wet from the rain and shivering from the cold, but that doesn't matter when you're in the arms of family. She manages to start speaking, but the lump in her throat cuts her off, following a flood of tears from her cheeks. Bruno has already heard enough to get the full picture, though he already saw it all in his last vision. Yet it still horrifies him that his niece thought she had to sacrifice herself to save the magic like his papa once did. This simply enrages him. Unlike his papa, his niece is still a child, she should not sacrifice herself like that to save the magic's fate, especially when the rest of the family had only treated her like she was a bother, an annoyance, someone to pity for not having a gift. He can't lose the only family who has been there for him no matter what, who understands him and never judges him for his gift and his truthful visions. He can't lose her, too. It's okay. Bruno says, in an attempt to comfort his niece. She's going to be okay. They're all going to be okay, as long as she's still around. It makes Mirabelle feel slightly better, knowing that there's someone in her family who values her more than the magic, who values her place in the family more than the powers they had been granted. Yet she can't ignore that, in the end, she failed. She failed to save Casita and the magic. Can they go back? She asks her uncle, just wanting to get away from the horrific scene of Casita's remains, as well as wanting to forget her attempted and failed sacrifice. At first, Bruno doesn't know where his niece wants to go back to, but he quickly remembers that she was at his place, asking him tons of questions before all this. Honestly, he wants to go back home too. He stands up again, carefully pulling Mirabel up with him. They take one last look at the remains of Casita, before walking away from the scene, towards Bruno's residence again. He can see it in her expression, that Mirabel isn't ready to face her family yet after this. But when she is, he'll be there for her. He'll be there with her. Right now, Bruno is more than glad that he was here in time.